Right. So, yesterday was quite eventful for the party. Doric had left the party in search of revenge against the Daybreak Society, and Anubis was taken away by Vaz. However, it was decided that continuing to follow Ember in his leads against his former boss was the best decision. A quick detour led to Sunflower, the romantic partner of Emrys, to join the party. After arriving at the mentioned barber shop, Ember was turned away by a flamboyant tabaxi by the name of Dart, who informed Ember that the owner was not was out at the moment and would be back by the morning, to which Ember of course responded in the only way he knew with skepticism and sarcasm. While Ember stayed at the barber shop, the remaining party members made their way to a nearby tavern to unwind, Le Polet Lambin. Once inside, the party was surprised to find a trio of adventurers sitting at the bar, a trio of adventurers that revealed themselves that they were part of the original party that Karak had sent all those weeks ago. Kenjeko the Kenku, Nameless the Dragonborn, and Morogain the Half-Orc. After a bit of convincing from an excitable Nameless and acceptance from the party, Morogain decided to join the party, at least temporarily, to help them in their adventure. Lawrence also made some conversation with an Orc man at the bar who introduced himself as Uko. Through some discussion, Lawrence learned that Uko ran a barbershop and was perhaps the contact that Ember was supposed to be meeting with. Back with the rest of the party, Cache was slightly conflicted on feeling grateful towards Emrys saving her life, but did indeed properly thank him for doing so. The night coming to a close, the party grabbed Ember from the barbershop and settled down in various places around the city for the night. The next morning, Cache, Sunny, and Emrys left Sunny's apartment in the Upwater District and made their way back to the barbershop. On their way, they passed the scorched remains of the Pax Tavern, which the broken windows had already been boarded up with, a, but had a hastily scrawled message in thick red paint upon them, reading, The Huntsman Returns. The rest of the party reconvened outside the Crystal Comb Barbershop. After being told to wait outside by Dart, Uko appeared from the back rooms of the shop and invited the rest of the party to sit in on the parlay between Ember and Uko. After being led into the back of the barbershop and down multiple flights of stairs, Uko had the party sit in a small room and brought up the topic of Ember's repayment. Ember is to assassinate his former boss, Gerlinda Riverbuck, who is currently running the rival gang known as the Red Hands from Claw Island, out in the bayou. After that, Uko mentioned that Ember might have a place among the Razors if he wants, and a new player in town by the name of Creed, who just happens to match the description of the yellow tifa that set the Pax Tavern at Lays yesterday. Creed has been active in manipulating and coercing multiple decisions in the Stone Council and seems to work for the Daybreak Society as a leader, though not much else is known about him. Finally, Uko raised the idea that the Council might be panicking a bit, as the crowned head, Sergei Dumond, is on his deathbed, as the amulet that has been keeping him alive for nearly 200 years has been stolen. With all of that information dumped on the party, rushed back into the city, left to plan their next steps. The brisk, nearly winter air, winter wind in the air, is your. Hey, so planning a murder, fun. I, uh, can't say I expected to be in this position. Yeah, you guys, uh, really got yourselves into a bit of a pickle, huh? Is it sad to say that I fully expected to be in this position? That's just really shocking to think. Really? I don't think a lot of people usually uh, expect to get into a situation where you have to go and fight some crime lord for a crime lord. But we have different lives than I guess. Yeah, yeah. They don't really expect us to actually, like, kill kill them, right? No, they say to sit down, have a cup of tea, and become friends. Yeah, they of course we're expected to kill them. them. Okay, so we need to kill a crime lord? Uh, yes. Listen, I'm going to be honest. I still do want to help you guys as much as I can. Uh, I'm not gonna go back on my word on that. But I'm still kind of on the fence about, you know, whole murder thing. 
How bad of a person are we talking? It may be worth looking into the crime lords and the different, I guess, powers of the city. See exactly who we're dealing with and who we're supposedly giving more power to. That's all well and good, you know, way pros and cons and, you know, yada yada yada. But I think we forget one very important detail. If we don't Wait. kill her, I die. And that would be bad. Yes, that would, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, exactly. It would be bad. He gets it. But we... Ember, I mean you. No offense. I want to know who we're giving... Who we're giving this power to before we eliminate all of his competition. Or at least his biggest competition. I know that things aren't perfect and they won't be perfect in Tano probably ever, but... With our action, I'd like to at least be assured that we're not making the situation worse for every single person in Tana. And uh, what, what do we do if we find out it will make it worse? Do we not kill her? Let me die? Is that the counter we have here? I think that might be something that we d deal with if it occurs. If we do find out that we would be giving power over to someone who quite frankly, shouldn't have it. I think we should all, as a group, discuss our next course of action. But let's hope that it will not come to that. It seems like this Galinda is a very unsavory type, and I've at least spoken with Uko. He doesn't seem perfect, but he seems like he has better priorities than Galinda, at least. But I would still like to learn more about both of them, and the organizations that they run. Fine, I guess we're doing a crime syndicate tour. Well, sorry, are we on a time crunch? I forgot what Uko said. He expects this to be done with soon. By the end of the week, right? End of the week. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> then can we, at the very least, just... spend... Uh, I'm not sure. I'd like to at least research a little bit. Fine. You're fine. That's fine. I don't want to just take the reins and take uh, control. I want this to be a democratic thing. If you're not okay with this, Ember, I want you to speak. I have spoken. My opinion is very clear. I want her dead right now. What about everyone else? Some information would be good on... You know, where we're going, and who this person is, and just all around the bad people involved in it. But also, I do want to know, uh, well, uh, well, after me and my buddies did the job and uh, failed in doing so, you guys took it, so I assume that you're all very capable people. Uh, so what does everyone you know, what are all of you capable of? Right, I think we're still in need of some introductions. Um, I suppose I'll start. I used to be the party's paladin, um, sort of, as you can see, I wear heavy armor. Um, I, you know, in fights, I usually try to draw the attention. Um, some things have happened, and I've lost some of my paladin abilities, but I'm 
still taking on the same roles in combat. So I'll be up in the enemy's faces and hopefully trying to keep their attention off of the rest of you. Yeah, I'll be the range master of the group, although I do have a little bit of magic. I mostly just do what Ember does, but more inconspicuously. I'm Ember Delight, at your service. Hello. Uh, what, what do you do? Yeah, what do you do, Ember? What's up, my piece? <laughs> Uh, so what does he do? He, um, he's very inspiring with his storytelling skills. Talks a lot. Oh, I, I love that. I, I'm also a storyteller. Oh, I know, lovely. I know you've got some magic up her. I just don't know how effective it is. I guess that's my turn. I'm Sunny, but I don't have a lot of combat experience since I just run a shop here, so I do have magic that could help. I'd like to think it would. I think it definitely will. If you don't mind me asking, Sonny, what sort of magic do you deal with? Um, well, how do I explain this? I was uh, from birth gifted with magic, so I guess that would make me a sorcerer. Um, mm. But I do have a little bit of divination magic as well but a bit of divination like, not a lot it's not like it's it's i <laughs> i really don't know how to explain this but i either way i i hope that i could be of help yeah the more oh, kind of remind me of a friend of mine he had magic too used it a lot but never ever uh, turned it on anybody. Always just made the prettiest shows. Use this magic That's for great. entertainment. Oh, yeah. Just like me. Although, well, I try to also use my magic to sort of try and stand up to people. You know, look out for the people who need it. Oh, but, uh, I should probably introduce, tell you guys what I do. Uh, well, as you saw, I, but I sing, I perform, I tell stories, learned how to intertwine magic into song and action. Uh, learned it from my mother. We're the best in Espa. And, well, a while back I started trying to take up or martial training as a sort of way of getting in touch with my late father. So uh, I'll try and uh, do what I can. You know how it is. Aye. Right. Any help that you can give us is appreciated. And I know a little something about trying to learn a martial art to get in touch with an old friend. Well, with introductions in order, um, how about we uh, come up with a plan of learning a little bit more about these crime syndicates? Yeah, I think that's our best move. I wonder not very proficient in libraries. I don't even know if these libraries would have histories of this. I suppose our best course of action might be just ugh, 
finding rumors throughout the city, maybe just talking to people, although I'd imagine this is quite a taboo topic. I mean... Ritano natives. That was what I was about to say. I mean, Amber, you worked directly for her, right? You've got to know names. I do. And... uh, Do you remember the other day there was this stuck-up magician guy who worked at the shop, the fancy one? I I would not forget Mm -hmm. that, though. Yes. Well, I happen to remember his sister. Who, well, let's just say we worked together back in the day. Not on great terms, but uh, if there's ever an in we need, at least have a relationship. She might hate my guts, but yeah. You know, strong emotion, you can always play with that, can't you? I suppose so. If not, I still have non criminal connections in town <clears throat> we can reach out to. Lawrence has met some of them. Ah, the doctor. Kane isn't a doctor, he's just a man who likes to help. Same difference. Well, well uh, normally I'd offer help, but um, not in the best standing at the moment. That does remind me, as was mentioned, um, it appears that a lot of shipments come out from, uh, well, the McKinnon port, you know, towards a, a Galinda's hideout, so perhaps that's where you can come to use. Yeah, I guess. Um, Sonny, you might know more about mercantile business than I do. Yeah, actually, DM, do I do I know anything as a merchant myself? Related to <laughs> like crime syndicates, or I guess, I guess yes, and also as a Tano resident, as a frequenter of the Tano area. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, as someone who runs a business in New Tano in the Upwater District, um, you would probably have a bit of a disdain for Gerlinda just as a general sense, because typically how it looks like she operates to you at least is keep as many people poor as possible will be, like, you know, groveling at your feet for gold. Mm. And that's yeah, I def- partially why New Tano is substantially poorer than uh, OG. OG Tara. Got it. Um, I definitely do relay that uh, information back to them. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, what uh, he said? Oh, yeah, yeah, what he said, what he said. <laughs> well, who said? Uh, you guys can't hear him? Voice in my Sorry. head. <laughs> my <Yeah. AD. laughs> Oh, you know something in uh, division. With division. 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 <laughs> divinity. Long divinity. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I Sunny. The new game. Sunny, if you're, yeah, if, I really like long division. Sunny, if yeah. you want to learn something, divination's there. <laughs> ah, yeah, I do have divination. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I do have divination. You do have divination. Oh, my goodness. Slay. Um, Can I do a small little ritual to cast divination? Are you I think gonna, it's 25 gold points. Are you going to cast yeah, it? Yeah, right. Just... Let me know. On the street? No, no, not on the street. <laughs> Sonny's not gonna sit yeah. in the middle of the so road. So you guys have just, just... <laughs> you guys have just been kicked out of the, or not kicked out, but you guys have just left the. That's true. Barber shop. Okay. And are just kind of standing there. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Um. I, I do know divination. I could, see if I could, maybe receive more information, on this. But obviously, I can't just sit down in the middle of the road and kind of do my thing if that makes sense shall we find the more secluded place your room uh, what is the yeah you have your room at uh, the tavern currently still 
the one yeah. that got burnt down? Uh, no, the one that... No, the one that the one half the, the party slept in. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. sure. I sure wanted to sleep in my little oh, cold house. That's what I'd say. That's kind of on the other side of the city, though, isn't it? It is, and it'd be about yeah. like, 20, 30 minute walk. No, no, I meant, I meant like What's nobody, the, when, uh, when, uh, um, oh my gosh, I almost said Lawrence. When, uh, Connor was like, I mean, no. no. Who said that? Never mind. Fuck it. Okay. Forget it. Okay, my <laughs> <all right>, <laughs> You know, Try and find like, like my car, man. Yeah, if you want to go to, a... yeah, is there a secluded alley that we could just uh, do it? Someone keeps watching on the outside. Yeah, That'd probably be best. Literally, like half the streets in the city are alleys. Just like some of them are yes. full of. Like, I want an know, alley without kiosks. Some of them are completely empty. Maybe a couple garbage bags and what? I would like the alley that is no poor people in it. Okay. I'd like to imagine there's pla there's like plastic those like giant plaque giant black plastic garbage bags just <laughs> hanging around. Yeah, I shouldn't have said yeah. plastic or garbage bags, but you know, they're like canvas sacks. <laughs> like New York. That's about to apply the Espa has We're in New York, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's just a a New York City no garbage truck. truck trundling down the, the cobblestone <laughs> roads, yeah. It's all like dodge out of the way of it. I'm driving here. Oh yeah, okay. So you find you find an alley <laughs> where you can set up your sacrificial offerings and incense and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um and take ten minutes to I'm assuming you are casting the spell. Yes. Okay. So you arrange your incense in a kind of or organized fashion and uh, begin to light all of the sticks. What is your sacrificial offering? See, I was, I know we were talking about it earlier, and I was still thinking about it, I'm like, damn, I really can't think of it. Okay, <laughs> right. so you um, arrange, you take, if you can't think of anything, I have one for you. Yeah, oh yeah, 100%, go okay. ahead. So yeah, you take all the incense, arrange it in a circle, and then within the circle you place 25 gold coins, all of them face up, mm -hmm. um, in a pile. And start to channel the divination energy through your veins. Focusing it into each individual coin by touching it. And once all of them are lit up, pulsing with this um, sorcerous energy, feel the connection kind of click. You are ready to ask your question. So you can ask a single question concerning a soul, event, or activity to occur within seven days. Oh, damn, I wish we had discussed this earlier. Um... Within seven days. Seven days. This spell's confusing. Yeah, I'm looking at it too. Damn. Basically, just ask a question. As long as the answer mm -hmm. will have, as long as you know the answer is good for seven days. Essentially, after seven days, it might not be uh, accurate. Okay. Um, I am sorry, but I literally forgot what question we we're gonna ask. Um. <laughs> We're gonna ask something <laughs> about you know the crime syndicates, or if Gerlinda is you know, the effect of killing Gerlinda, or yeah, something else. I think I think a good one would be to ask what is the effect of killing Gerlinda, and so how often can you uh, cast this? I can. It's a let me double check. Well, it's a level. Four spell for me, and I only have one four uh, spell slot. So oh, after okay. another long rest, I could do it again. And as long as I have twenty five gold uh, points. Wait, I thought you're casting so... as a ritual. Correct. So okay. as a ritual, you do not use a spell slot. Oh. Ooh. Okay. However, I didn't know that. however, if you cast the spell two or more mm -hmm. times before finishing your next long rest, there is a cumulative twenty five percent chance that you get a random reading from oh. the DM. Oh, okay, I one. see. Yeah. Mm -mm. So the next time I can cast it, it would probably be safe to cast it after a long rest. Mm -hmm. So, um... How can it answer? I... Does it answer yes or no, or is it, like, extended? Like an eight ball? I offer a truthful reply that might be a short phrase, cryptic rhyme, or an omen. 
Because I was going to be like, where is she? And you'd be like, Tano. And I'd be like, well, thanks, bestie. It is up to me. However, I will not be that asshole-ish. This is not a genie. This is a human being where answering. <laughs> Ask again However, later. However, you do already know where she is. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess my question will be, by killing Gerlinda, what, what comes man? after? Yeah, what 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 happens to Tano once Gerlinda is killed and presumably someone new comes into power in the crime crime syndicate esque area? Are you sure that is your question? I don't like how you asked me that. So I can only give you answers within seven days. So you'll be asking, you know, within the next oh, seven yeah, days, I guess so. what happens oh, to that's true. What, what will occur, I guess, in the next seven days? After oh, wait, no, no, no. Maybe, maybe we should ask what would she do if she, if we try to attack her or something? Oh. That way we could be I mean, prepared for any surprises. That is assuming That's you want true. to kill her and have decided to kill her. That is true. I thought we'd agreed. I mean, it's no, because we don't know what's going to gonna happen. Oh, I so, okay, guys, which, what is our question? <laughs> what is our question? Sounds like you've narrowed it down to two, but I will, I will stay out of this until uh, you're ready. So, this spell that you're casting, it can only tell us the future. It can't tell us, it, it can't allow us to glean more information about the present or the past? No, it can. You can ask any question, okay. and I will give you a truthful answer, as long as it's in a... as long as it's within no seven days. If you ask a, okay. if, you, if you ask it about the future, it will only be within seven days. Okay. What if... This is... I'm not sure if this is the best question, but what if we ask whether Uko or Galinda has indirectly killed more people. Does killing people like of course it matters, but I'm saying in the sense of it you know, it could, yeah, does it matter in this sort of situation? Mm -hmm. Because what if it's them killing someone who is bad, or someone who's not innocent? Yeah. I was thinking more along the lines of killing civilians. Maybe if we ask which one of them has killed more civilians, either directly or indirectly. I feel if we ask these kinds of things, it... I, I'm not sure, you know, because, you know, I guess... Well, either way, I can cast this again after I rest for a while. So there is still other chances for me to cast this spell. But is this 100% what you want to ask? No, it seems like you're not very certain about it. I feel like asking who has killed more and dictating if, if they are a bad person from that isn't the best. Because when you think of it, there could be some soldier who has killed the same amount as they have, and are they a bad person? It kind of is like, it's a morally gray area. There is no good person, bad hey, person in that kind of situation. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> soldier moment. Soldier moment. Ask, maybe you should ask the inverse who has provided more. Because at the end of the day, that's what matters. Isn't that it? is true. Mm hmm. Is provided more? Would you be against that? Provided more what, though? Provided more to the community. Who is well, will benefit more? Getting lots of people who work for her, goals and such, no? Yeah, but we're not asking if she's provided anything in specific. But there could we'll... be more than gold. But then if we provide a vague, a vague question, we'll only get a vague answer. Like, if whoever you're asking this says that just Uko has has given more, we don't know in what context, we don't know what 
Can I, can this is I ask quantifying. You, can I ask you something? Yeah, sure. Do you think in any situation um, there's ever a 100% objective choice as to whether somebody is better than the other? I do not. Then I, I feel think... as though we are fatally flawed in asking this from this spell. We, we can have to the very... what we want. Yes. Well, that's why we need to weigh certain... certain things, you know? Like, we need to specify what we're asking. But how do we quantify who is better for Tano? How about we just say who has benefited the Tano area for the good of the people uh, between the both of them? Would that be better? I think that's the best question I've heard so far. Is question? anyone uh, who has benefited the Tano, the Tano, the Tano, Tano. area, <laughs> um, the most? I think that's a very, fairly, uh, how do I say, fairly detailed, or not detailed, but to the point. But we will get our answer. I'm assuming you're restricting um, the question. From it. You're restricting the question to either Gerlinda or Ice Yes. Unless you would yeah. like a riddle that included both of them. <laughs> that the question. Who is to say that? Yeah. <laughs> Try again tomorrow. <laughs> All right. So you ask the question who has provided more and acts in the best interest of the Tano people? Gerlinda or go incense kind of begins to slowly swirl feel the energy pulse joins in one last breath up its energy the smoke slowly smoke form face of an orcish man Our answer is Uko. I don't think anyone here was super surprised. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It still is good to have this confirmation, I, though. I could have told you this so long ago, but okay. Mark off, and the 25 gold pieces begin to evaporate into the smoke. As the figure of wasted Uko money. Okay. Here is into the wind. I hate to say oh this, gosh, but no one asked. Okay, is this satisfyly, satisfactory enough? Can we then move on to the actual murderer? I guess. Um, Wonderful. We should probably look around town for better materials, though. Hmm. DM, did you, could you refresh my mind on where we could find her? Or you could find or roll history? Linda? Yes. Yeah. That was... Unless someone else wants to give dock, an answer. Right? She's hiding on an island off the McKinnon port. Yeah, Claw Island, I think. Okay. Claw Island. So... Uh, okay. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to ask if I'd be familiar with that spot. Yeah, actually, make a history check. Let's see if D and D Beyond wants to work. Oh, it's slow, but it's rolling. Oh, come on. Uh, ten. <laughs> and. Yep. Okay, Ember, or Sunny, do you want to make a history check? Sure, I'll history check. Yes. Let me pull up my history from my brain. Oh, that's a plus zero. Okay. <laughs> that's a 14. That's a, that's a 12 for me. Okay. Ah. So all of you have vague ideas of what islands, like any information regarding the island. They're basically, there's two islands, Claw and Talon Island, out in the town off the coast of Tano. 
speeches. And um, there's conflicting stories about their histories, but for the most part, they both had an influential part in the Nutano rebellions as essentially strongholds for the rebels. Are, are yeah. home to kind of like you haven't you know seen them in quite a while but emrys and honey just for your connection you know that there are castle and a out on gotcha. okay mm-hmm that's what brought up the new kind of rebellion No, it's okay. I just know. There was a rebellion way back he when. Just... Emrys would know more if he rolled higher, but he doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was asleep during that class. I forgot. <laughs> for gore. I for gore. Oh, all right. Okay. Play. Emrys. Uh. Oh. I don't want to force you. Was it about my rapier? No, well, actually, yes, but also uh, reach as well. So true. I need to go pick her up. Okay. I know I personally have errands to run. Um, my rapier is still damaged from the rest monster. Um, Call back. Anyone can go with me if they would like. Um, but regardless, I encourage everyone to try and prepare and look for whatever materials they think they might need, including better equipment. Yeah, we're... Oh, jeez. Um... <laughs> yeah, I feel like we need to, you know, figure out a plan on how we're gonna actually get to this person. Because I feel like, you know, just walking right up, knocking on their front door isn't the best way to go about things. Well, I ventured that uh, our friend Emrys here can possibly use his connections to, um, well, at the very least, get us a boat from the McKinnon port directly to Claw Island. Because that's where all the shipments come from. We can probably hide in one of them. That could get us transport there. But that's just step one. We're still missing all the other steps. And I hate to be that guy. I will not be very good at being stealthy. Uh, me neither. My armor is kind of a uh, jingly, and right. Morgan will like bounce up and down, show that his <laughs> scale mail is like clinking. It jingles like, in, I... in a very musical fashion, almost kind of like tons of mini bells. But uh. Well, I'm I'm kind of good at getting around it, though. You know, there's a rhythm to it. Hmm. Don't want to rely on that, though. Um, we need to do recon of some sort. I think. Um, you know where I'm going with this, Emperor. Um, okay. Is there anyone you trust to possibly talk about whatever may be going on over there? I know Sonny and I can try and see what's on paper for what's going on. I can the island. try to reach out to some of my old contacts. But, uh, well, I'll try. I'll try. Oh, well, in the meantime, I can go with you to the weapon shop. I'd yeah. like to take a look at some stuff. I, I'd like to tag along, too, if that's all right. Yep, no issues there. Well, it appears I'm tagging along, too. Let's swing by that magic shop again. I will, well, first of all, we might be able to use some stuff, plus I need to be able to talk to the proprietor. You can get me a con in contact with my contacts. Right, so. Sounds like a plan. Three places. Going to the, what, the... 
magic shop, the blacksmith, and the healer's guild. Yes. Mm -hmm. Killer's Guild are the ones with the birds, correct? Yep. That's where Reach is. Okay. Reach. <laughs> right. Which one are you going to first? Mm, Reach will be fine. Let's look at the... Um... Let's look for the... Let's look for the magic shop first. I mean, you pass, like the, did pass it on the, the way here. We're going to spend the most money. Mm -hmm. going to be the Lord's the, it's off the top. About 10 minutes away. Assuming you're going to the same one with uh, Ember. Correct. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. fun. Walk in and see the familiar High Elven man dressed in all black. Black hair, black eyeshadow, kind of lounging on the counter, surrounded by myriad magical. I step up to the counter. Afternoon, my good sir. Afternoon. Uh, How are you on this wonderful morning? No, whatever. It's cold. Do you agree? I like the outfit you have on today. Very flattering. I would say I like yours, but a little garish. Well, you know, some of us have actually, you know, grown out of just wearing black, but. But you said you liked it. I was obviously feigning. It, so get on your good side, but that's clearly not useful, so hi. So get it side what I need to talk to your sister. What makes you think Well this is most likely she wants to kill me, so good first step. Very much. Yes. You have a death wish, then? Not particularly, but I do need to talk to her, so I'm willing to risk it. Aaron Wayne. Hmm. Well, might get a bit dangerous. I don't want her to bring too many of her, our old friends along with her as we meet. Not the fun bunch. But, um, let's say. What about in the uh, new district? There's a clinic run by a man named Kane. I'm sure your sister knows of him. I don't know. That's why I said I'm sure your sister knows of it. So there. Shall we say... Hmm, dusk tomorrow? Dusk tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, and you know. I ask her kindly to come alone. To me? Especially no, no. knowing it's from you. Well, perhaps she'll be interested enough, or at least willing to kill me with her own bare hands rather than any help. Funeral. <laughs> and he's gonna kind of make a, a spinning motion with his finger. A kind of thread of, like, pure white energy is gonna come out of his head, and he's gonna kind of twirl it around his finger like spaghetti, and kind of shoot it off. There. Set. You are, darling. Are you buying any? Possibly. Do you have anything beyond this drivel? 
Sorry, your tastes are so exquisite that multiple thousands were old. Well, I'm sorry too, I can assure you. I was disappointed. Perhaps you could go behind a tavern and dredge the cistern to be suitable. Ow. That hurt. That was you know, sarcasm. I know it's difficult to read people's tone, especially when you speak on a monotone at all times, but, you know, try to keep up. If you see something, ring the bell. Where to take is it one of those, like, uh, hotel oh, ring bells? Oh, absolutely it is. Ding, 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 ding. I just go at it. <laughs> um, he's going to kind of twirl his finger and cast silence on the bell. <laughs> I keep going. I contact. <laughs> Wait. Isn't this the same place that I have put my horn band? So is it time for me to pick it up, or is that... Uh, you already picked those up. Later. Yeah, we already I, picked them Oh, my God. <laughs> You know, the, the, the ripe age of 20 really makes you lose yeah, memories. I, oh Sorry. Uh, it truly does. <laughs> I, I forgot to say that in the recap. But yeah, you pick those up and you realize oh, that, uh, okay. yeah, the person who passed the uh, spell was. I don't think we picked it up. I, I swear. Also, because I also lost. I don't know what happened. I think my obsidian file got deleted from my my notes for the game, oh, which makes me really sad. No. Uh, That's not good. I literally have no idea what happened to it, and I've been like searching on my phone the entire time for it. I mean, you've only been playing for one session, so it's oh, not. Oh no 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 wait! I didn't. I I searched. Oh. I said searching through my phone, so it it must be on my phone. Hold up. Hey. Yes. <laughs> okay, it was on my phone. I thought it was an obsidian and I couldn't find it. Okay, Slay. I'm going to move this onto obsidian now, though. Oh, Slay. Okay. Thank you. Slay. Wait. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I didn't do anything. No one did anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a thought that Just talking. It's the yeah. talking yeah. that helps. <laughs> Regardless. Eve... Amaris, did we? I think we did just a wrap up. Okay. Regardless, let's say, yeah, on your way back uh, from your house, you stopped by, you got your, your thingies back, um, and oh, you guys chose to uh, have them reverse the magic. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. You learned that Master of well, this Enchantment bands. Are currently low. The council of the headland. So whoever cast the spell is high up. All right, and Emrys will take him, and then hand it to Sunny. They're no longer glowing, and all the inscriptions and things that were on the inside of the band have been wiped. Okay. Um, maybe it would be safe if I put it back on. They probably, they probably know what it looks like. Is what I'm saying. Mm, what they know what we look like. Mm hmm. I don't think it won't matter anymore. That's true. Then I'll just put it back on. You guys can look around this shop. I will say this is probably the most expansive magic shop anyone has ever seen. There, are, it's it's like a supermarket of magical items. Um, any pretty much anything below, like rare or below, is here. Damn. Yeah. I'm gonna look around and just anything, yeah, mutter anything like except weapon and some things, but it'll be at DM's discretion. But most things. Are. Okay, uh, so if I like potions. look up on D and D, 
Yeah. If I look up, I'm need to be on site. Yeah. Okay. If you look. Do they have like magic rings? Look. Rings like just jewelry? Yeah, like but magic jewelry. Magic jewelry. Um, yes. Yeah, they do. I'm gonna go look at that to see what they have. What's the pricing for these magic items? Standard, maybe a little bit more expensive than. Mm-hmm. Which, I need to get out of so the probably, home. Probably like closer to the top or the the higher end of the range. Or. Okay, so, ju- like, how much would an uncommon magic item usually cost? In uh... like, in normally, and then compared to this shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you said uncommon. Yeah. Typically, in this shop, an uncommon magical item would cost probably around two hundred and fifty to five hundred gold. Okay. Ooh. So that's that's a lot of money. Oh, we're gonna skip out on this. The higher end of that is more money than I have on my person. So I think more money than I I think most of you have. Fine. I think how much did you say? If you pull, uncommon item would be uncommon would be somewhere between two hundred and fifty to five hundred. And this is on the higher end, so that would probably like is that in this shop? Yeah, yeah. Or is is that that's in this shop? Yeah. Oh, the range is one hundred to five hundred. How many gold are in one platinum ten? Ten. Okay, give me a second. Do my math. (gasps) Yeah. So each of you got two hundred gold pieces from uh, the late hunt. If you pool all your money together, you might be able to afford a rare item. True, that could kind of break the game. Ah, I'm the prime really. balancer of everything that occurs in this you game. You are a balancer of everything and all. And usually, like, break rare items, depending on the item, usually only help one person. Yeah. And all, it's funny, Anubis and Doric had like half of y'all's magical items. Yeah. You guys Doric would be learned. having a fucking blast in this uh, in this shop. I gave y'all uh, gloves of missile snaring because I assumed Emrys or like, you know, Ember would want those. And Anubis just took them and like <laughs> disappeared. <laughs> I didn't even know we had this. Yeah. You, guys, you guys had, had <gasps> gloves of missile snaring. You guys had a plus one magical scythe. You guys had. Um, we had a magical, magical scythe? scythe. Yeah. I, am, scythe. Honest, Anubis, I don't remember half of those. Anubis things. had the moon scythe, which was a magical item for him, but like. <laughs> yeah. He just didn't use it. Uh, oh, well, goodness. Yeah, pretty sure Anubis did, because it's a plus one focus it for is, druids. It is a plus one focus. It gives you a bonus to healing magic. Mm. Yeah. He doesn't exist anymore. Well, he does. He's just he not in our immediate exist. vicinity. No, he's... We don't know if he exists. Gary. Well, Doric had, like, some... Bag of holding. Like... The alchemist by... The alchemist... Box of holding. The... The oh, uh, Anubis rod had... of... Anubis had, the... Anubis had the bag of holding. Solemnity. But also, that bag of holding was Doric's his self. That's right. Mm-hmm. Emrys does have the coin of oh, solemnity. No, Ember has the the rat's feather. How did you get a oh, bag yeah. of holding? Uh, it was Doric's uh magical item infusion. Hmm. Huh. Artificer's cream magical item. Anything? Artificer's turn a normal bag into a bag of hold. Piece of one. Huh. Lawrence has the long sort of spell rending. And I also have an immovable an immovable rod. Oh, I like Dork gave only, that. I forgot. I think of which, if anybody thing. like wants to hold on to the immovable rod, like I, I can never think of creative uses for that shit. So just what does it. said immovable rod do? Let me actually just look at it. You pretty much just like press up. <laughs> That's a button what the internet's for. And it just stops, even if it's like like it, it, like it, if you press a button. And you just like let go. It just, it just fucking stays exactly the, where you put one it. One of the best usages of the movable rod I was I saw in a online campaign was 
uh, I think critical role. They s got swallowed by a dragon, and they turned, and it was flying, and they turned the immovable rod on, and it just kind of stopped in midair and tore through the. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, I think that was critical role. I That's have, pretty cool. I have an idea, guys. Because I've made a list of magic items I'd like to get in D and D. Okay. And one of these is the brass horn of Valhalla. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's that's essentially it summons three D four plus three berserkers to fight with you. Holy oh shit! <laughs> you can only use it once every seven days. So you have to like, you know. What? What rarity is it? It's it's rare. Okay. Um, Other than that, brass. I think the only item that would be worth us like pulling money for would be like a casting item, like necklace of prayer beads or mm. necklace of fireball or something like that. Because then anybody can use it. We'll just have to have yeah. one person hold it. Uh, Sunny, I will also say, uh, how yeah. many diamonds do you? Sunny, me? Diamonds? Yes. What? For your what? revivify spell. Oh, right. Um, you hmm. have all this money. I will give you the option of how I much gold worth of diamonds do you have on you? How much does one diamond cost? One. So one casting of revivify costs 300 gold pieces worth of diamonds. Oh, fuck. God yeah. damn. <laughs> God damn, I forgot about that. Um, <laughs> no, we should have stole. We should have stolen Anubis's little refrigerator bag. Yeah, refrigerator bag. Yeah, Sunny's gonna. Sunny's. Sunny is painfully going to spend on one diamond. Uh, it, Don't die. It's not spending. Please. It's not spending because it's still worth 300 oh. gold pieces. Like, you can use those diamonds to still buy stuff. Like, oh, okay, still, okay. They're still diamonds like you can sell them back for that amount of money it's just you know oh yeah which is this will... i want to say in case yeah. you want to like okay. cast the spell you need to have had those diamonds previously so yeah. true okay um and like say like oh i want to have one casting by ready and have put 300 gold yeah i i think one casting is fine yeah one well, do i need to take that money out of my um no we'll just we'll just say like you know 300 gold pieces worth of your money is in diamonds yeah okay i would say yeah i would say that like you know being a merchant in tano is so hard you don't get that much money <laughs> but uh definitely for at least one casting group sure. you guys decided on one there are also potions and uh, rings. It's... Oh, excuse me. Yes. I... I don't think I have any potions of healing. How much is a potion of healing at this shop? 50 gold. Mm -hmm. 50 gold? Who here can heal? I have uh, very light healing right now. I Morgan have can heal. a healing spell. Actually, okay. yeah, we... We have a lot of healers in this group. I just wanted to check. You guys are yeah. stacked for defense. Yeah, I think our I'm gonna offense. backpedal on that. Uh, Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, our offense is not it, but we have so much healing. I'm gonna wait to spend anything till we get to the, um, like actual armor shop, so you can get a better crossbow. Yeah, I think I'm hey. just gonna focus on mundane items. Yeah. As of right now. Yeah, I'm gonna grab it and find anything. Yeah. All right. So you guys are gonna leave, or yep. are you gonna wait for uh, the the man to come back? Two. I'll leave. Leave. All right. We'll head out then if we've got everything. I'm ahead. All right. I I'm gonna head out. I leave the, the emo <laughs> elf. No. Um, Let's where are you this. headed next? I think the armor shop. shop, right? Yeah, the weapons yeah, and armor, armor shop. So you guys make your way to uh, the local, not local, one of the local blacksmiths just on the street here. Um, 
called the Dredge Hammer. A kind of rustic looking building, heavy wrought iron kind of gates on the outside. And uh, you head inside and you see this massive Goliath woman just kind of uh, carrying around this tiny little otter folk man uh, as she Aww. kind of hammers on the the anvil and you see the otter folk is just kind of leafing through a, a book like taking notes on inventory and whatnot wait she's carrying him yep like on 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 her shoulders oh okay I thought we, she was like She's like baby carrying, holding. She's carrying the otter, <laughs> and then the otter is in turn carrying a book. It's the otter so is in a papoose. She's no. actually swaddling the otter. That would be very demeaning. <laughs> this is a person. Little baby otter papoose. <laughs> How tall is she? She's like seven and a half feet tall. Good for her. Good <laughs> shit. You see this kind of like thin strip of hair. Um, or like it's more of a like a very you think it's hair at, at the beginning, but no, it's just a tattoo that goes from her forehead and just goes in a in a rectangle straight down the back of her head, down and disappears beneath her her, uh, her armor, kind of like in a mock fashion. Mm. Huh? And no one no one responds to you entering, uh, as there is sounds of fire and quenching iron and hammers and there's other people browsing shop as well. Yeah, a wide variety of weaponry, armors, kind of laid around. Um, question for the DM, because I don't trust my tracking ability in the past. My past means tracking ability for this. Um, in D&D Beyond, it says that I have six javelins. I doubt that. How many javelins do I have, Spencer? Six. They use six. I mean, I trust your oh. ability, and you did buy some in Nanguya. I remember you bought cool. a bit in Nanguya. I did. I did bought a bit. Well, fuck it. I'm gonna grab four more. <laughs> All right. So there's you can't have too many javelins. There's you just can like, never have too many. Kind of in like an um, um, umbrella-like container. There's just like javelins and spears and like you know halberds and all sort of uh, staff weapons mm -hmm. next to the counter. That and four javelins will run you twenty gold. That's a lot of javelin. Wait, that's a lot of a lot of gold. That's a lot of damage. I thought javelins were like hella cheap. Uh, this thing five gold. Like I'm pretty sure they're not gold. The average cost is three gold, but I mean, it could just be an expensive shop. We'll say since you're buying in bulk, 15 gold pieces. 15. Okay. Uh, I, will, I will purchase those. It was, a, it was just a simple javelin, right? Yeah. Well, four of them, but yes. Yeah, um, do you need to be on list them as five silver each? Five silver? Okay, that, then this website you. is probably just wrong. So we'll say oh, um, it was uh, 20, so, so two oh. gold. Jesus. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I was okay. about to say, I was, gonna... I, I've had characters, like, get them just because it, it's sh it's like a shit amount of money anyway, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, there's, a, um, there's a PDF I, I'm looking at that yeah. has all the costs and stuff, so... No, it's simply just taking account into inflation. Yeah. So true. Um, it's rough times in Tano. Mm-hmm. What? Is there any armor or weaponry that looks special looking? Um, there are a few. Um, high, high, uh, you know, quantity items like long swords and uh, plate mail, breastplates. They look like they have some sort of Anting engravings on them, to perhaps like a plus one. Is there anything you're looking for? Um, is there any special looking great swords or medium armor? I 
hang on, let me look at medium armors available. Is there any, um, I should actually, hang on, I'm pulling up like the regular costs of things. Okay, is there any plus one great swords or scale mail? Oh, yeah, yeah, there's, there's, there's a plus one great sword there's a plus one. Yes, there, there's both of them. So you can see the scale mail is kind of in the back under a case. How oh, so? Kind of like, well, it's in a glass case, like on display, yeah, behind the counter. Okay, how much is it? Uh, is, it is it in common? I th think... rare so that would be probably costing five Oof. and for a plus one great sword that would cost around probably the same uh things are expensive how much was the plus one weapon and the Okay, no, uncommon weapon is five. Yeah, yeah, it'd be about 400 gold pieces for the plus one grade. Damn. Would, would that be the same for a plus one crossbow? Uh, yes. Okay. How much would it cost to fix my rapier? It's a normal rapier, right? Yes. Yeah, that would be like five or ten gold pieces. Oh wait, um Actually Are you are you clearly looking for a rapier or like a replacement for one? Yeah, I mean roleplay wise, you could probably see that Emrys has pulled out his severely damaged rapier. You see it's like pockmarked like, and rusted with like, you know, acid spittle and dipping metal. It's oh, real like uh, what happened to that thing? Uh, too close to a rust monster. I don't recommend it. Oh, well, if you're looking for a replacement, uh, don't bother spending gold. I have a, I have a rapier in my pack. Oh, I I used to use it before I got this big old sword. Oh, huh. <laughs> I mean, only if you want to. Oh yeah, I'm not using it. Okay, then. And then uh, Emrys would uh, take it if offered. So, yes. Emrys, you have the crossbow master fee, right? I thought I did, but I looked and I don't have it indeed to be on, so. Okay, I will. I'm removing the rapier from my list. And Emrys, you now have a rapier. Yippee! Yippee! <laughs> Let me get rid of my fucked up one. Oh, there we go. That crossbow. So what feet did you take then? It says I don't have any. I feel like there's something missing. Oh yeah, crossbow specialist here. Oh, is it on there? Features and traits. Oh, and I would under feet crossbow specialist. Um. Yeah, so the benefit Oh, I'm just blind. So the benefit of crossbow specialist is you can use you can attack with a melee weapon and then also use a hand crossbow. Well. If you want to swap out light crossbow for a hand crossbow, that might be I'm not gonna tell you how to do your Yeah, how much do hand crossbows cost? Here they'd be about Sam. Error? Hey, one second. No, you're good. They're a piece I of technology. Yeah, they're money. a very compact display of technological prowess. It's a hand crossbow? Yep. 
That's um, one um, dice um, lower damage, but since it, if you're melee, it might be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll buy it. Okay. How much gold do I have to get rid of? 60 gold pieces. Okay. Oh, I forgot I had a backpack. backpack uh, 60 backpack. gold pieces. Are you going to sell your, your... No, no. It's only, it only makes sense to use the, the hand crossbow when I'm within melee range. Uh, if I'm not within melee range, I'll just use the real one. Yeah, that yeah, that works. You'll get a little more damage, but you'll have to take uh take some time to swap out chance. Will it take an action? Yeah. Unless you just drop okay. your, your weapon on the ground. Putting a weapon away put takes an action. Okay. Oh well we'll see you when we get into battle. Thank you. <laughs> Large Goliath woman just kind of looks at you, dropping a hefty sum of money. Oh, yeah. As I look around, do I find any, um... I'm looking for two things. Splint armor and... Some kind of better shield. I'm I'm not specifically looking for a plus one shield, but if I find it, then that would be like something I'm considering. Sure. Yeah. So um, you do find some splint armor. That's gonna run you about uh. Check. That's gonna probably run the you average around cost two hundred. Yeah, that's gonna run you two hundred gold pieces if you. Um. And oh yeah, also the the hand crossbow and the light crossbow have like very different range differences. I'd rather keep both anyway. You find a shield. You find a shield of missile attraction. Missile attraction. The hell is that? Tanks, tank lover. I will look at the shield of missile attraction. All right, mm. you see, there's kind of like a nice little plaque on it. Uh, oh, on its, display. it's like we're in a museum. Yeah, it is kind of like you're in a museum. And it says, uh, Wa Holt and other. Yeah, it come. It's uh, gone. No. While holding the shield, you have resistance to damage from ranged weapon attacks. However, when you are attuned to this weapon, uh, whenever a ranged weapon attack is made against a target within 10 feet of you, you become the target. Dead. Hey. No, so it's mm. right off. Kind of based, if I might add. <laughs> See, to me, that's a win-win. The effect lasts even if you remove the shield. Cool. Um, wait, so the first part is... What was the first part where, like, I'm better against While holding the shield, you attack? have resistance to damage from ranged weapon attacks. But okay. the shield is also cursed. Tuning to it curses you until you are targeted by the remove curse or simply removing the shield fails to end the curse on you. Whenever a ranged weapon attack is made against a target within 10 feet of you, the curse tar causes you to become the target instantly. I mean, yeah, so I basically just pull... You are missile... You are attracting the missile. Yeah. I pull the missile from my friend to myself, which I honestly view that as a good thing. Oh, you like, would. yeah, exactly. Okay. Would it still be, um, would it still like run against my AC or is it an automatic hit? No, it still goes against your AC. Okay. And how much is that? 400 gold pieces. Ooh, fuck. That's really good. Is this all kinds of spells? Any range. It, it, it's weapon only attacks. physical. It's only weapon attacks. Only range. It's, oh, it's not. Oh. Yeah. It's not physical damage. It's ranged weapon attack. So if a weapon does magical yeah. damage, then it does work again. But not okay. spells. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. 
However, However still weapon you attacks. do technically have the, the sort of spell rending as well to cover the other side of oh, that. Oh, fuck, you're right. Um, how much of it, how much more money would you need to pay for that? I need 41 more gold, but I would also, if possible, like, I really want that splint, because that's 200 gold for another plus one AC. Which is, like, that. that's pretty damn good. I mean, I don't need to upgrade immediately, but that's definitely something that I'm, like, looking at. And the shield doesn't give, like, the shield is still plus two to AC. It's not anymore. Correct, yeah. It just gives you resistance to damage okay. from attacks, which is powerful, but it still means you take damage. Yeah. Yeah. But so it there... means you take less damage. Before the week is over, is there any way we can girl boss ourselves into more money? <laughs> um so let's so i've been looking you guys have five days mm -hmm. you're equivalent you're like on tuesday right now um tuesday in it tuesday in it tuesday. if you can find a way to make money this is a city there is money to be made but i'm not going to tell you how or where to do uh He's telling us that we should get have an idea going business I also have an idea. My idea is cracked, so you're I'm gonna sell first. crack. Before I ruin the, <laughs> before I, before I ruin the series I vibe of the call. Actually have. Uh, I, I was like, just... I'm curious what to go first. Okay, so we have at least three characters with expertise I th in talking to people. So we could try and persuade our persuade someone into letting us perform at like some high end place. That Wait, pays yes. well for performing. Yeah. You guys also haggle with this shop owner. Yeah, you absolutely try could try and barter like, like everything, <laughs> or sell some of the stuff you have. Like I'm pretty sure you I guys have some expensive shit. Things. Oh, it's all my things. I have an unhealthy attachment to my things. I can't Honestly, sell them okay. if I need them later. Should we consider selling the immovable rod? You know, <laughs> how many times are we going to need an immovable rod? I don't know, but Let's when you need it, you really need it. Really need it. I mean, the you're going to be like, damn. It's not funny games until, like, until we all fall to our death. We could have used it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The only scenario the I can think that could really, really like save us is if the healer needs to survive fall damage. That's we all have, I can think of. We have like four healers. We're good. I do have some. If one of them falls, it's okay. <laughs> I do have some spare leather armor that I would like to sell. Hello? Okay, yeah, you can sell that for, uh... Um... Normally costs 10 gold, yeah, I think. Sell it for 8. Uh, okay. I have the same. Yeah, sell it for 8. Oh, yeah, I can also sell my chain sell. Mail. Immovable rod will sell for around 200... Oh, okay. Okay. 250 gold pieces? Correct. Are we all on board for just selling this immovable rod? <sighs> we might be able to get more useful shit from it, that's true. So. And we, uh, but here's the thing, we could also, that's, that's the initial offer. Hypothetically, we could get a better price if you guys want to barter. For like, let's say like we just grab all the shit that we want as a party, and then also grab all the shit that we want to sell, and then just do one big like negotiation with the shop owner. If that's the plan, then it might also make sense to try and look out other avenues. Maybe yes. we don't have to sell it. Someone perhaps skilled in talking to people could sell up the rod because it's from Snowtooth. And not a lot of people go from the snow to snowtooth, and their magic is weird there. I'm gonna the send you an DM, Spencer, because I have a question. <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, I feel. Win. Yes, there are. But you're gonna have okay. to wait until next session for me to plan one. 
Now I'm curious. I know that's why I that's why I said Patreon go first because I'm gonna fuck up the vibe of the call. All right, so you guys got are you guys gathering pretty much everything that you want to buy and sell and haggling down the price? Or um, I think so. Yeah, we're gonna try and haggle down the price. Maybe, guys, maybe it's worth just trading. Like, not even haggling money. Like, maybe it's worth just picking a single magical item. Because then it would be Ooh. easier to haggle that one thing than it will be to haggle yeah. two separate yeah. item prices. So, uh, so, I mean, looking at that uh, shields of missile attraction, whatever it is, that is about as rare, I'd assume, as the immovable rod. Maybe we could strike a trade. I think that is going to be our best bet. I think right. so too, yeah. All right. Who wants to talk to her? I'm not very good at that. Oh, uh, what are you trying to do? We're trying to barter. We're trying to... There's a shield that would be very, very nice to have. And I have this immovable rod that I don't really think we need. So we're seeing if we can get the shop owner to trade. Or at the very least trade with minimal minimal expense on our part. Uh, where'd you get it from? A city called Snowtooth, off to the west. What would Morgane know about Snowtooth? History check. Oh great, he is <laughs> he's not good at Intelligence checks. <laughs> that is an eight. Nothing. You uh, haven't even heard of this place. Never heard of it. We could tell you a little bit about it if it would help with the bartering. That would be helpful. Well, so basically, it's this... I guess it's underground. It's like in the middle of a mountain, right? It's... I'm pretty sure it's a city of bug people made of like glass that was powered by this weird seed that sent you to another dimension I, or rather I, sent emrys to another dimension i don't know where it be, being made of glass came from because that's nowhere in my notes and i don't think i ever said okay. that but it is so cool i'm just gonna roll with it <laughs> Okay, fuck yeah. Wait, so was it actually made of glass? Or no, we that was just all you I never described it as being made of glass. It's just, I love that me idea neither, now. Me neither, me <laughs> neither. So is it actually made of glass? No. Well, it's, uh, its material was never well, no, described. I'm, no, I mean, is it actually made of glass now? I will say there are lots of glass elements, but it's not entirely made of glass. It's like some, I remember a big, yeah. big hallway made of glass, yeah. and some of the pipes had glass on them. So... It's this city made of glass with, like, bug people. And it also had these weird, lot of weird magic items. Like, there was these things that you just stepped into, and then it elevated you. It was very strange. You can see, um, if you're examining the um, immovable rod, there are, like, veins of blue etching on it that almost looks like panels. Hey. Little beaker. Little beaker. Little beaker. Lawrence, you also have that vial <laughs> of unidentified liquid. Oh my god, I do. Yeah, you got a lot oh of Oh my stuff. god, I do. Oh Love shit, me I some unidentifiable vial. liquid. Oh my god. Wait, where the fuck is that? <laughs> I can't find it in my inventory. Oh my god, that reminds me of Patreon. Fucking Doric left with our vial of acid. Oh, yeah, I think I gave it to Doric. Oh, vial uh, of acid. Wait, what vial of acid? No, the vial I traded you a vial of acid the vial because of... Emerus went off on his own and did shenanigans. <laughs> the and I came back with a vial of acid from, like, the pool. It's bright like, fluid. Like, hidden. The bright fluid. Oh, you bright fluid. Yeah, bright fluid. And then I also believe I gave him the vial of the unidentifiable liquid yeah, the that we found uh, the clear liquid back. it's all I'm going to kill Doric 
I'm gonna kill I mean, him. Just, we we gonna just, do just, just, things. Bring his boyfriend back to life. All right, it's, it's all right. You're dead. He's doing his best. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, Morgan is gonna say like, uh, I can try and, I, I can try and convince the shop owners to try and haggle with them. I mean, should we? Uh, I mean, we may as well just do this all in one go, right? I think, yeah. I mean, you're just, new, you and you and Sunny are new to the party, so I think you should just go for it. See what happens. Okay, we're trading this rod for that shield. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> All right. We're basically asking you to prove your worth, so don't disappoint us. Good it's luck. not proving. We're just seeing what's going on. I'll make you guys proud. <laughs> Do you walk up to you the large? This, you got this. You got this. You walk up to the large woman. Could we possibly, no. uh, like? There's no way I could help, right? There's no way that yeah, I could do the help act in here. Yeah. You okay. Can. Sick. Yeah. As you can gonna... say you're describing some of the snow toothian. Yes. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I will walk up to both uh, the Goliath lady and the Otterfolk guy. I'll be like, excuse me, who who would I talk to about purchases? Us. Both of you? We both make decisions here. Perfect. So, I must ask, because i going, uh, jumping straight into it. Kind of leans down, me. slams her palms on the counter, and just kind of looks down at you and says, All right, handsome, go ahead. Oh, well, it would be bad manners of me to just assume that you haggle, but do you do haggling here for Very prices? Very limitedly, yes. Well, no worries. We, I wanted to wonder if I could perhaps, uh, we could perhaps trade an item for an item. What do you have in mind? Well, that friend of mine uh, was looking for that uh, shield of missile attraction. Um, Wonderful mm, work, might I say. Thanks. Uh, and perhaps we can trade for this rod of holding that my friends here acquired in this very strange place. Now, I've seen magical items before, and... They say that they pulled this thing out of this strange far-off place called Snowtooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Place with weird heard magic. Heard that before? I'm gonna take a look at it, okay? Of course. The and I'll just gonna like hop on the table. Off, hop off the off the shoulders and onto the counter and pull out a magnifying glass. Start twirling magic in his hands, plucking invisible strings and uh, identifying what this is. A persuasion check with advantage if Lawrence is helping. Yeah. It's, um... <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right. That'll be a 23. A. The full kind of stops and looks up at the, the large woman and says, Ah, well, honey, this is this is what they say it is. I think we could trade the, the shield for this, don't you think? I uh, say so. Yes, that makes sense to me. All right, it's a done deal. That's great. <laughs> uh, you trade the rod of, of... What was it? Rod? You said rod of holding. It's not holding is the immovable rod um immovable, immovable rod, rod. <laughs> immovable rod for the what i'm holding this will sound right shield <laughs> <laughs> the shield of missile attraction oh yeah thank you so much i'll make sure to come back here if i sure. if i'm in need of a great sword or uh, armor you guys are so nice mm, you're sweet any other Aww, things I try. I'll turn to the rest of the party and give them like a, a look. 
I'm going to whip out that splint armor. And then I'm also going to begin the arduous process of taking off my chainmail. Okay. So Just you... giving it out for free? Damn. <laughs> He's, are you wearing your pajamas? I'm desperate me? for money, but calm down. I'm wearing, like, <laughs> not... Not pajamas, but like protective padding. Like again, can't so uh, Yeah, and yeah, like there's still plenty of clothes underneath. I'm not, like, I choked on my water while I was no, saying it. Okay. I'm you're sorry. Okay. You just <laughs> got me up. Got me up. You're too. not the weirdest one because that's what they are inventing. when people say Gambison. And I'm like, oh, okay, best. No, actually, it's pronounced like that in <laughs> Tano, so team. fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> got a pronunciation. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you, you take that off. You go, you sh yeah. Um, so I'm assuming you're you're transferring them for the difference of cost between. The two. I am, yes. All right, so chain mail, chain mail typically. I think se mine says seventy five GP on twenty. All right, 20. so we'll say since it's heavily used, you get it for fifty gold pieces. So take fifty gold pieces off of the cost of the split mail, which I think you said was two hundred. 200 so that would be 150 150 yeah so if you're happy I there you can you can buy for 150 15 platinum pieces okay buy that or are you going to try and haggle down i am going to attempt to haggle can i help sure by like saying like oh these guys are pretty great i've heard some great adventures they've had so is that going to be me rolling persuasion with advantage, or is there any way I can get? Um... Uh, it's just you rolling advantage, bud. All right, all right, Fuck. we're we're rolling with it. It's not terrible. I'm gonna. Oh, why can't I? Why can't I right click this? This is very strange. There we go. Come on, come on, big money, big money. Seventeen, not bad. And what's your? Okay, so your argument for a seventeen is that you're an experienced adventurer. We'll As use they can it well. see by the the wear they've had on their armor, I, I assure you that uh, they're putting some use into this stuff. There's it's not also, going to waste. I in, do love when my armor gets proper. So, what's your price you're looking for, honey? Well, for my chainmail, uh. I think 150 good price. Mm, can you take it down to 140? Gonna kind of hoist the chainmail up and kind of examine adding on the inside and the, where the armor is has taken some wear and how well kept it is. How I'm not sure how superstitious the types are that walk in here, but there are some groups that believe that a well-used armor has a story, and that story can protect him. Well-used armor does have a story. Well-cared-for armor also does. This is... Or... Thank you. I try. <laughs> 140. I think it's, it's a fair. deal. I'm gonna count out 14 platinum pieces. And they will place them on the counter and say thank you. Hi, Rolla. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Spencer? Yes, yes, what, what? Are oh, they you... dating? Who? The otter and the other person. Are you going to ask? No. Well, then I guess you won't. <laughs> <laughs> then I guess you won't. You can roll inside if you want. <laughs> uh, yes, I will actually. Go ahead. Why should it be like siblings? You yeah, siblings. Like Goliath and the Otter. What are we use a pet name? Listen, adoption is a thing. Adoption yeah. Right back, Amaris. Somebody used a. Yeah, not one, but. Not one, Misty. <laughs> I bet they're cousins. They are <laughs> very clearly just step siblings. <laughs> nice. What does yeah, I use a pet name? I was curious. Yeah, with a nat one, you I definitely mean... are absolutely certain they are not dating whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I love blended families. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> interracial. Oh yes. God. We love it. I mean, wow, we that's love what Empress is. So that's hey. what Empress is. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You interracial kind blended. Of. Okay. Emrys is an inter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love parent child interracial couples. They're my favorite. <laughs> interracial, one half black kobold, one half orange kobold. Oh my god. It's actually only one fourth orange kobold. And one fourth orange, yeah. One fourth. Yeah, I, I'm orange on my grandmother's side. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, on my god. grandma's side. On my mom's side. So my mom's mom, orange. Okay, jeez. Where are we headed to next? The the Aquilar's Guild, right? Yes, I need Reach back. Need Reach. That, get that was was she named Reach when I got her? Correct, yes. Okay, and I have a question. Yeah, I have an answer. Do I do I own Reach or am I renting her services? You own her. Okay, good. Cause I was I was afraid I am just renting her. No, no, you were gifted her as a, a thanks by uh okay. Mr. Chief Haluk. Good, good. In the in the after credit scene, when Emrys retires, he will become a falconer. Nice. Yeah. In this case, you have yes, you have the full like knowledge, knowledge of how to command her to do stuff, where to go, and how to deliver mail for you. Hell well, yeah! You know how to communicate with her, or like if you have someone like Anubis, perhaps who can talk with animals, you could use her as a scout. That's so yeah. true. All right. But so anyway, you, we've got to go pick her up. You enter, you go to the Aquilar's Guild, which is a very kind of nice building. It has on, it's like a normal building, uh, you know, backled, uh, rough play outside. But on the top, there's this kind of almost like a wicker material, like a wicker basket material. This huge kind of inverted funnel that looks like it opens up into the sky. And every so often, you just see an eagle, a post eagle fly into the hole at the top and then sometimes it just kind of flies out there's like a, a, a loud bald eagle screech yeah well yeah you hear like the chittering of, of bald eagles and various other uh raptors sometimes sometimes yes you I do hear the screech of a uh red red hawk a tail a red tail hawk it's not just eagles here but they're mostly and walk in, see a uh, halfling woman just kind of sitting there painting her, her toenail counter right now. Ew. Ew. Dogs out on the job? <laughs> <laughs> That's a choice. I'm sorry. I'll shame you for that one. Glamorous? My god. No. I, I... That's why I fucking thought. No. <laughs> he thinks about oh. it, but he doesn't say anything. Ah, welcome. Um, Sorry, I'm just finishing up here. No, how can you're. I, how can uh, I help? You're, you're good. Uh, have um, mail to deliver. Something to pick up, perhaps. Uh, yes, I have mail to pick up from my hawk here. Uh, your, your hawk. Uh, describe him or her, them. Um, her name is Reach. Um, she's very... I'm trying to remember the kind of hawk she was, because Emrys would not forget. Uh, um, she's brown and black, and she has red accents. I remember that. Like, her face is red. A uh, bat Yes. Uh, she got the red she's face got... and the red, the red clobs. Mm-hmm. Red skin, essentially. Oh, yes, uh, I have been here for quite a while. Yes, I I can assume that you take good care of your hawks here. Of course. And eagles and falcons of all sorts. But yes, we do take care of them. Mm -hmm. And no fee for the for the housing of them. The male carrier has Okay, thank I you. will go get her and the mail. Yep, thank you. After a couple minutes you see Halfling kind of hop back up on the counter on wearing like this kind of very thick falconer's knit on one arm with uh, reach perched on the knit 
beautiful mm -hmm. as ever, and in the other hand has uh, uh, two letters. We love reach. Okay, I'm gonna take both letters. Um. Oh my gosh, what question was I gonna ask? Oh yeah, um, did Cache stay at Sunny and Emrys' house? Yes. Okay. I'm just thinking about who else may need to send letters out. Um, okay, yeah. I would like to open the letters and make sure I recognize them. Okay. Uh, where did you I'm send? Been... Oh, okay. I got a ping like at the same time you said that in a different server. And I was like, what the? <laughs> yes, I infiltrated. <laughs> <laughs> you infiltrated a USF TTRPG club. There you go. There are the two. Okay. Oh! Um, the party can see Emerus's face, like, nod as he opens the first one. Like, you could tell he was probably ex not necessarily expecting something like this, but he's not surprised. Um, but as he opens the second one, um, his brow furrows before, uh, lighting up, and then he will actually hand the them. letter to Ember. Oh. I think Ember was, yeah. Ember should know this person. He takes it. Do you want me to send it, Spencer, or would you like to send it? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I love telephone. I love telephone. Copy paste it, please. <laughs> I love Let's put mail. it in players chat for now. <laughs> Here you go, Bessie. Read away. I think you know who this is. Oh, it's so stylish. I can't read. You can't yeah. read. I can read oh, it. Oh my lord. <laughs> I'll read it. No. Right. Ember can embarrass himself. I can't read because oh. of man. <laughs> You're good. Oh, um, well, Emperor can't read math <laughs> and also can't read math. Just give me like two minutes. It's okay. <laughs> this no, it's okay. I can read it. I can read it. Um, <laughs> he'll look up. Sunny, uh, I don't think I ever got around to talking about beauty. Um, but um, he'll also turn to uh, Morgane. He, she was um, briefly in our party when we first met. Uh, she has since moved on. Um, but yeah. Um, it says, Dear friends, I hope this letter finds you well. While you lot are out looting and saving others, I remain in Carrick's tutelage. I'm growing stronger each day. I hope to eventually wield swords more eloquently than even the beefiest of warriors. I hope to one day travel with all of you again. I just have more training to do until I feel confident enough to step back into that dangerous world. Until then, I keep up my routine and make as much coin as I can as a barmaid. Speaking of, I understand you all are making way straight for Tano. I wish you all the best. My grandmother always told me that there is strength in numbers, so stick together. The city can't be much worse than scary monsters in the wild. Regardless, each of you need to stick around long <laughs> enough to see my new dance with oh, love, beauty. Ironic. Aww. Aww. That so was written by Lily. Straight from Aww. her mouth. Straight from the dad. Straight the top. Um, so cute. I love that letter. Yeah, as he slowly read, Emerson will uh, speak a little more softer, like not quite sad, but realizing the gravity that they are missing two of their members. Um, the other one's from uh, Karak. Um, she turn. He'll turn to Ember and nod and be like, "She addresses us as the humble heroes." Um, welcome to the Gateway City. I hope all of your group made the journey safely and that the city is treating you well. Now, it's been many years since, but I used to frequent Tano in its better days when I got a break from my training in Nirhanen? Nirhanen. I cannot thank you enough for agreeing to protect my precious cargo. I have informed Hamashal to treat you well, though I doubt he really needed any convincing. If you haven't met already, he is one of the nicest people you meet in Tano. Do say hello to him on my behalf. Word of your deeds and Snowtooth has reached my ears. I have not seen a Holok that grateful in, the line in a quite a while. 
In addition, Beauty has been proceeding exceptionally well in her training, and her fluid command of the sword equal to her height reminds me of her myself many years ago. I have enclosed a letter direct from her pen she was quite eager to write. Clementine and Donkey Delight continue to be in good care. Do, s do send for them when required. Hopefully it is nothing of note, but a Republic Scout group in the area was inquiring about both your group and Snowtooth. I spent enough time with the militia to know better than to divulge the information. However, I do worry. Be safe, the Golden Ring of Sheetrock. Bless her. Well. Oh. Uh, at least we knew they were looking- Delight is doing well. Yeah. At least we knew they were looking for us regardless of where we went. It's good to see that she's doing okay. And that uh, friend of yours seems really nice. You guys uh, yeah, nice. must have traveled with some really nice people. Yeah, we try. Next bag. Some of us do more than others. <laughs> I'm no uh, stranger to some, you know, butting heads within a group of people. No, I don't, I don't think that happens here. The last time that happened, he fucking died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we killed our last party. <laughs> Holy shit. He did not say that. Was he would not, not have been involved. Group. He would not admit to it. He didn't kill anybody. <laughs> yeah, sure. Tell right. it to the court. It's always the, it's always the happy ones, you know, that really snap. I don't know. Like the love doesn't fit. <laughs> or perhaps the shoe will. Oh so bad. <laughs> <laughs> you. That's it, guys. This is all just a build up to a, a 50s uh, <laughs> murder mystery, and now you are all required to roll new characters. Talking oh my God. God. Yeah. Exactly what I've been waiting for with the. We with that. should <laughs> go back and get Beauty so we have three bards in the party. Okay, we should oh absolutely God. not. Old I'm bards, thinking, old bards. I'm thinking about like a campaign where we're already reaching the end, but like a campaign where you play as the victims of a murder mystery. Trying to like through like yeah. ghostly apparitions, trying to convince oh. and tell the people investigating your murder what happened. That would be that very was cool. that was almost similar to what the trespasser game was gonna be because the trespasser game was gonna start with everyone already dead, um, ah. and having woken up. Oh, yeah, it was the afterlife. Yeah, w w waking up Dark Souls style um, as an undead. Um, and then I was thinking about the system, and I'm like, nah, we need a first adventure, adventure so people actually know what they're doing. You have Reach. You have your letters from Crack and Beauty. Uh, yes. However ironic and sad those might be now. Current events. It happens. It happens. Um, and I'm assuming you're finishing up your guild, right? Send an email. Um... I'll take Reach with me for now. Yeah, you can send because mail after you don't need to send it through. The yeah, after this session, I'll sit down and write a message for Karak just because I think she should know about what's going on with like Keshe and like the inn. Um, but oh, yeah, that's can... not like something we do right this second. You can tell her about uh how you guys finally found the old party. Yes, that too. And that Morgane is super super sorry. <laughs> we can keep like we... cry typing on the message on the letter. <laughs> I'm it's so like, sorry. It's like I just writes, you to abandon your he just job. Writes, I sorry. So my colon. Sad face. Sad face. Sad face. Yes, right. I saw we. So I, I, think, I think now is a good time to to wrap up the session. Um, mm. This was very nice. It was a short yeah, session, I don't... but I think we got all of the yeah. like non. Lot yeah. stuff out of the way so we can this jump was a good just right like into slice it. of life yeah mm. uh, immediately next. which i'm assuming read we'll... almost sorry take place ember you said we're gonna meet with um contact tomorrow night at Kanan's place right yes okay i rented out my ex-boyfriend's uh place Jesus. to have yeah. my secret yeah. meeting yeah. Does he even know? He's that's the question. So much drama. That's, that's our next step. We're gonna go tell. We're yeah. gonna go meet my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, I will. Does Lawrence know? <laughs> this is not what I expected this to go, but Lawrence I will met him. prep for this, and this is going to be so much fun. Hell yeah. I fucking, yeah, this is wonderful. Kanan, the okay. contacts. Um, it sounds like y'all are pretty right. set on killing Berlinto, right? Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> Not um, unfortunately. I mean, unfortunately I for feel like that's the most. Before, yeah. You know? Unfortunately <laughs> for her. Unfortunately, unfortunately for her. Well, untimely demise. We'll see how it goes. You might not see. That is always a possibility. Oh, I'm All ready right. to create a new character if yeah, we don't. Campaign wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, campaign. Yeah. Years of academy training wasted. Yeah. Damn. Well, you know, but maybe when, maybe when we're done, we. We fail killing her. It's just gonna be Doric. It was getting a new party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm gonna haunt your that. asses. The whole I'll party come back as a ghost. Uh, <laughs> Spence just goes. Anyway, Doric, what are you doing? Back as like what? Uh, <laughs> Doric and Anubis. How are you guys doing? Uh, I feel yeah, better now that y'all secret... have. Oh, go ahead. Secretly, uh, Doric and Anubis are in a two-person party. No, three-person party. With beauty, four person party, including Voss and the werewolf guy. Of course, yeah, just kind of like they're just like, oh, finally, we got rid of them. Thank yeah. god, <laughs> yeah. Voss is like, oh, I'm so glad we're besties now. Oh I feel like, I'm depending on how the Tano arc goes, like, I don't know, depending on how it goes, it might be the tentative end for Emerus's story because, like, he's just gone through so much shit. Like, if there's a possibility that his hometown won't try and kill him, he might just take a hiatus. You know what I mean? I totally That's get completely that. Reasonable. And that. And that would be a good, I think, a fitting end for Amor. Yeah, at least for now, unless some other conflict arises. Let's we'll see how the Tano arc resolves, because there's, I want to say there's like, you guys are finished, uh, Gerlinda is like the first sub arc in the Tano arc, and then mm -hmm. there's one more to resolve Emerus's bit. And then that's yeah, much I it figured. Um, that's I have a couple thoughts about the how the arc goes, but I will I will DM them to you. Yes, I would love that because because I don't think I don't think they. It's more of like outcome rather than like this is how it should work. You know what I mean? It's a destination, that. not journey. Yeah. If anything, it's it's more fixing plot holes and tying stuff together. But I think we definitely do need to tie up some plot threads. Mm -hmm. I've been openings. I've been tearing at the seams of every single plot and just as you should. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. Uh, three minutes early. Wow, this almost happens. But uh, no, it's okay. Speaking we of three minutes early, minutes, I do. Actually. I do. Before we call it a night, I just want to gauge interest on that. I'm not sure if everyone saw it, but I posted like a survival mystery style mini campaign idea I'm down. Uh, for pathfinder 2e yeah i know yeah you're down i know uh patron are you also down yeah okay it, it, if i can get at least one more person i will like prepare for this i also will work more on that high level one shot more uh, well, it might actually just turn into like a one or two shot. I'm still working, but on, still working on Lancer, but you know, sounds like we enough weeks together where or <laughs> something else. Run. We can usually do an alternative. Learning a system is is oh. time intensive, and yeah, <laughs> that's my only hesitation to join because like running. Um. I'm not worried about running the game because I've already, like, part of the player base when we started it have agreed that this is going to be a slow long-term game. Like, we're probably not going to have another session for over a month and we're going to focus on play-by-post and setting up, like, the gritty parts of it. So I'm not worried about that. It's just between writing for that because I'm writing all of it and school. I don't know if I can learn a new system right this second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like maybe in a month or two, once things get more settled, I could give you more definite. Like I could definitely join answer. Since me, um, I'm a little too busy and right now. Typically, have time every week to get together. We can't run Espa. I would love to just have like a working session, y'all. 
the Lauren Pathfinder. Yes. Um, but that's also assuming that Lawrence uh, um, is down for that mini campaign. Honestly, if you guys do it to where we have learning sessions and we don't have to learn it on our own time, that makes me more available. I will absolutely, like, I will, since uh, all of you have very limited experience for 2e, I also have... Like I've read a little bit of it, but I'm not like a like as familiar with it as I am with Five E. Um, mm -hmm. I would be like, I, I would not expect y'all to go into this knowing any more than like having a character sheet, you know? Okay. Which, I'm, I'm definitely interested in the greediness of, of two. Yeah, there's some really cool stuff. The main thing for Two E that I really like is that well there's two things one it doesn't break down at high levels so like it's it's way more balanced is what i have seen um and then there's a lot of like there's a lot of unique ways that you can customize your classes without without multi-classing yeah like the uh you get sort of like feats yeah in like every like single leaders. level you make a decision for where you want to take your character it's not just like oh i level up i get hp and i maybe get a feature like there's every single time like every single level you get to choose like either like a a general feat a skill feat a class feat pretty much just like transitioning your character into exactly what fits them and then they all tend to be very balanced and then i also really like the three action economy I, but yeah, I would love, it, if we can't get if so like a next week after if we can't get us, I would love for Lawrence to set up a time. Lawrence, me or Lawrence Lords? I was looking at I Connor you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, yeah, if if <laughs> y'all are baby, down man. for anybody that is interested okay. for that survival mystery um, mini campaign, I and we have time. I will be more than happy to like go over character creation. Oh yeah, yes. yeah. That's I can start looking. At just start looking at Dewey myself too. Hell yeah! And... There's some really interesting stuff, and oh, there's also there's also in Tui there's exploration and like specific mechanics for exploration and downtime. Like there's a lot more like. There's a very clear cut ways that like exploration for like like long term exploration or long term downtime can be handled, which is something that is very interesting to me because this is a survival mm -hmm. a survival idea. So there would be this would be very open. Like it. Mm -hmm. And where, are the, where where did you put the information? Sorry, it, it's no, in general. Just... I can post it again, or I can post put it, it, put it here. It, put it in the resources. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, actually, is yeah. it? Did you mean resources were related to the game, or resources related to? It's literally just that like opening paragraph of like the idea for the mini campaign. Yeah. I, I could put it in like the channel that I was going to use for the gods campaign, but I since just made it to be determined yeah but I mean, i'm not sure if that's... you can you, we can purpose that or whatever okay uh, uh, all right yeah i'll post it in that and i will rename this to um to island mystery okay i need to go and get dinner yeah oh yeah also, one last thing. Uh, yes. I know I've mentioned it a few times in the past, but my uh, Wilds Road Trip game. I really want to run that. And, Hell yeah. Yeah. and I know I we run a lot of like low-level one-shots, like level three. So just a reminder, I could up the level to like level eight to, or to ten. Ooh, I like that. I'm down for whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. as, as long as we can, you know, finish uh, a game like Weilu. 
Yeah, I've been wanting like I I, I, I fucking have Boilu locked and loaded. It's just Lily is never available, and she is a very integral character to Boilu. Yeah, yeah she is. is. Mm -hmm. It might be a summer kind of thing where more people have exactly. Yeah, that's that's gonna be on hiatus for a little while, just based on Lily's schedule. And your your wild road trip hunt, you might have to plan it for you know you don't have everyone available. Kind of just a game we run one person coming from Espa. Like I mean, yeah. We could have like a full party traveling and like if someone is unavailable, they can like just be sleeping in the car. They are they are in the trunk, locked in the trunk. Yep. Yeah. They, got, they got too crunk. I think I think that's a good plan. So yeah. I gotta go. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Hey. Enjoy yeah, I gotta go sleep. Yes, Thank you for sleep. DMing. It was yeah, a goddamn just... lovely session as always. Yeah. Yeah. As always. I love your silly little voices. I tried my best <laughs> thing. I didn't even see the Your otter sounded like Stewie. Otter. The second, <laughs> Stewie the second he started talking, <laughs> I was like, Brian. 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 Uh, I hate y'all. Okay, good night. <laughs> <laughs> good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.